Great. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> nice to see some friendly faces this morning. Uh, we want to start by acknowledging the traditional territories of the Kwangan speaking people within whose, within whose territory we operate. And we give thanks to the Songhees, Esquimalt, and Wasanic First Nations for the privilege of carrying out our work on these lands. Uh, today's uh, conversation dovetails and is a capstone to the PIDC project, which has really been an investigation into bodies and land. And so it's really exciting to um, just sort of think about that as we acknowledge where we are and uh, what kind of work we're taking that's taking place here. So I'll pass it over to Kosar. Thank you. Thank you, Kagan. I am going to um, run us through a number of slides to start us off. Um, are you, are you to welcome to Creative Mornings, Victoria. Um, today, our theme is rhythm. This theme was picked by the Basel chapter of uh, Creative Mornings. As you know, Creative Mornings is a, a global organization that we are part of. And so here's what the Belgium uh, chapter had to say about rhythm. What rhythms set your pace? A celestial rhythm is pulsing all around us. The earth spins, the sun rises and sets, the moon pulls and releases the tides twice every day. The seasons loop, natural constant patterns of back and forth. But we also live amidst the unnatural rhythms of flickering fluorescent lights, pinging notifications, and vehicles idling at traffic signals. Rhythm can light you up or burn you out. It's the heartbeat of creativity. It provides the structure we crave, a framework for ideas to take shape. By recognizing patterns and breaking them, we can find our unique voice. Rhythm serves as a catalyst for the power of a dancer's movements, the pacing of a poet's sentences, the cadence of an actor's voice, the timing of a comedian's punchline, the strokes of a painter's brush, the meter of a musician's notes, all that creativity just keeps going and flowing. Ta -ta -ta -ta. <laughs> <laughs> Tap into your own rhythm and follow wherever it takes you. So how do you keep your own beat? Listen to your breath, listen to your heart. Um, so moving on from that, I would like to thank some of our sponsors, which is the City of Victoria, the CRD, as well as HCMA, which is an architecture firm that designs buildings, brands, and shared experiences that connect people. As you know, we are from the Victoria Arts Council, and Kagan already mentioned, currently we have the uh, PIDC uh, exhibition in our space, which is Plural Presences. And you can join us tomorrow night, uh, Saturday, 25 of November, 6 to 9 p.m. for the closing reception to meet the artists and chat with us. As well, I would like to mention that in December, we have our member show, which is the Little Gems Holiday Art Show and Sale. It starts December 2nd until December 21st. We have close to, I think, 100 artworks from local artists here, and we would really love to see you. We're going to be open every day of the week. Um, lastly, I would like to mention that we have a number of satellite galleries around Victoria, including the Greater Victoria Public Libraries and Victoria International Airport. Um, you can visit our website to learn more about things that are happening offsite out of our main gallery space. And without further ado, I would like to welcome our guest speaker today, Lee Ingram. Lee is an emerging multi inter non disciplinary artist concerned with forms of storytelling that relate to memory, myth, spirituality, connection, and healing. Lee is based between the Kwangan territories and Chukchake, which is also known as Montreal. Lee is a queer, Black, mixed race woman of African Caribbean diaspora, exploring ways the body can contradict expectations of dance, performance, and identity, while also remaining open to the experience of ancient and ancestral ways of moving to be revealed through the body. Lee has created and co-choreographed experimental dance and theater projects and has worked as a collaborator in sound, score design, live music performance, performance art, and installation work. And also Lee is part of our ex current exhibition in the space today. Here are some words from Lee about today's theme. Uh, rhythm is a theme or rather a constant presence in both my personal and my artistic practice. 
My body is a main vehicle in which I respond by either moving with or opposing to the rhythmical qualities of my surroundings and environments. My relationship with rhythm is primarily and radically intuitive, meaning I do not prioritize technical language or theory, nor do I view it as something mathematical and separate from the body. I instead focus on finding rhythm and movement in everything and everywhere, seeking out the subtleties, the textures, and the sensations of everyday sound and gestures. This process informs the work I do and imagine doing. So please welcome uh, Lee to the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Uh, yeah, I thank you for the, the description of the theme, you know, and where it was influenced from, because it really helps remind me of how intuitive rhythm really is and how much it can be a part of our like everyday relationship with the world around us. Um, so I'm going to do a personal check-in for myself and I encourage you all to do the same in your own quiet way. Um, so I'm showing up in this space with a lot of rhythmic currents. Um, that's anxiety and shyness and certainty, so much grief so much anger and fear and hope and connectivity and love and curiosity and passion. And all of those are flowing within me right now, this moment. Um, uh, for me, rhythm is all about a communication with the outside world um, that goes inside. And it's also a sensing of the subtleties um, at any given moment. Um, so I asked myself what the re relevance of rhythm is for me right now in this moment. Um, and you can also take a brief moment to think about how rhythm feels for you right in this moment as well. And throughout the gathering too. I hold so much gratitude um, to these lands and these these ancestral, unceded, unsurrendered Lebanon territories. These lands have held me through so many rhythms. Um, and one thing I like to remember is to move with the rhythm of the land and let the land remind us how we can be in conversation with it. Um, I've learned a lot about being quiet um, and, and listening to the teachings that are stored in these lands, in the water, in the trees, through the creatures, um, walking with caution and, and curiosity, and imagining what was once here before. Um, and the land has also taught me to listen to the stories that are stored within my own body, um, an invitation to be curious what, um, what rhythm can evoke that the mind might not be able to remember. Um, my journey of becoming an artist <laughs> <laughs> began here on these lands. Um, and so I want to acknowledge all the people in my life who uh, are grounded here on Coast Salish lands and all over Turtle Island, who are my friends and they're my teachers and collaborators. Um, these are folks who I am in solidarity with and actively building rhythms of resistance against oppression and creating spaces for our, our shared healing and liberation. Um, thank you all to all my friends. <laughs> um, I also can I will also cannot acknowledge the pathways um, that I and we are taking to decolonize our minds, our institutions on these lands without acknowledging the current genocide that is happening to Palestinian people in Gaza right now. And there is a rhythm of resistance and it's felt and it's a collective rhythm and it's powerful mm -hmm. and it can encompass our entire body and the spaces that we walk around in. Um, and I've been thinking a lot about the power of, of rhythm when I'm walking alongside people in solidarity in these marches, because I feel the sacredness of the drum. I feel that rhythm of resistance in our feet, in our hands, in our voices as we move forward in rhythmic connectivity. Mm -hmm. So the drums become an absolute staple in protest and revolutionary struggle um, because it is ceremonial, it is ceremony. 
Um, the rhythm is what keeps us together, fuses us together, and it is an embodied experience that um, becomes like a glue for, for hope and for rage and for love to flourish. Mm -hmm. um, that call and response that we engage in in protest is storytelling, it's meaning making, it's reminding us of why we're here and what we're what we're speaking to. Um, and the pause contains rhythm too. So the pause that we're in contains rhythm too, and there's still a current. Um, so I just want to acknowledge that I'm once again coming with a lot of uh, of currents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so take a moment uh, to reflect on how rhythm and the drum has been influential or present in your, in your life and how you've witnessed it in transformative and radical ways. My face is warm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, for, for me, um, rhythm, so I'll get into um, my early experience with rhythm and how, um, how I reflect upon it now. Um, so rhythm is something that has always been like felt. I have never really understood it in a theoretical way until later in my life when I started to take lessons or start to understand the theory behind rhythm, but it's always been something I just felt because um, my body is much better at remembering than my mind is. Um, I grew up Christian, predominantly in the Black church and around a lot of gospel and soul music. Um, my mother always had gospel music playing in the house and still does. So those are sounds that um, I was constantly surrounded by and wasn't really thinking about what was happening in the music, but I just, it was a felt sense. It's just, this is what I understood rhythm to be because I could feel it. And those are my earliest memories. Um, so it actually wasn't until I attended my great, my great uncle's funeral a couple years ago that I heard a relative clap on the two four and I was like, there it is. That's why I can feel it. Okay. And it was always there. That that clap was always there, but I never, I never like pulled it out and said, oh, okay, this is this is the structure, this is how it works. Um, and that was like a aha moment for me that I uh that I felt so much gratitude that I had was was raised in it and could just always kind of return to it. Um so yeah, before I even learned how to play drums, before I even danced flamenco, I would often explore the in-between. So I would hear um, a song or I'd hear, you know, I'd go to a show and hear the drummer playing and I would always go in between um, because in my mind, there's just so much possibility in between and around what we hear rather than just what we hear. Um, so that realization that rhythm comes naturally for me is not something I take for granted and I'm forever grateful for that experience of growing up in the church despite the struggles I had with religion itself um, that's something that I would never have replaced um, yeah I also listen to a lot of reggae um, and rock steady, lovers rock, ska, dancehall, soca. There's just so much music that comes out of of Jamaica, and I'm really grateful that I also had a lot of influence. I was influenced by that a lot too. And once again, this thing where I, I'm experiencing it, and I don't know any different. This is just what I listen to. This is what I understand music to be, and it really helped me develop like an inner ear um, for rhythm itself. My sisters also grew up in the 90s. They were born in the 80s, grew up in the 90s. So I definitely was also influenced by a lot of hip hop, old school um, R&B. So yeah, these are, these are the kinds of sounds that my childhood was filled with. And as I got older, I became more interested in 
just different genres of music, um, things that are a bit noisier, a bit more experimental, um, ambient, heavy. And within all of these genres, there's um, there's some relationship to the world and to people. And the, the subtleties are there as well. And so each each genre of music, I'm I'm able to explore a different rhythm. And that's what I just love about music in general. Um, but yeah, those those early relationships, um, that those early experiences with um, music, like a hundred percent, have shaped like my obsession with it right now. <laughs> and I, I really am obsessed with rhythm. Um, so take a moment. Uh, to reflect on your earliest memories of, of rhythm and music and how maybe that has shaped who you are now and like what kind of relationship to rhythm you might have as well from those earlier experiences. Reflecting, your pup is reflecting. <laughs> um, so I'll I'll continue on and talk a bit more about my artistic practice, and um, I definitely view it as an always present practice. Like I'm always thinking about rhythm. I'm always engaging in it in some ways. Anytime I have a moment, I'm practicing it or moving my feet. And it becomes something that I'm just carrying with me at all times. I don't have to go to a studio or set time aside to develop it. I'm just always doing it. And the times when I have access to a studio to move or to play drums or um, to practice flamenco is, is amazing because I can feel the application of my, my daily practice being informed. Um, so yeah, I'm always thinking about rhythm. Um, and I, I don't, I sometimes have a hard time with this term artist because maybe because I'm emerging, perhaps maybe because it's something that I feel rather than do. And the main pulsation I feel is related to rhythm. And because rhythm is something I feel all the time, it's hard to separate like me and being an artist. Um, so I, I struggle with that. I struggle with that term, um, but it is all about storytelling. Rhythm is 100% about storytelling and transmitting and translating information. Um, and this information can be a feeling, an experience, an impression, and even a location. And that tends to be the place that rhythm takes me or when I'm engaging in rhythm, I often go somewhere. It's a, it's a location, it's a journey. It's a pathway, um, and there's just so many ways that rhythm can have a conversation with us and that we can be in conversation with it. Um, so one approach um, I have to find rhythm is, one approach I have is to find rhythm wherever I am. So like even right now, your dog is is in this back and forth, there's a pop, 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 and there it is, the rhythm is there. Um, the way I'm moving my hands to communicate um, is information as well. Um, so I'm very curious about how to be in constant um, awareness of the sounds that are happening and asking, is this rhythm? Is this just noise? Can I find, can I find the rhythm in the noise? Um, can I collaborate? with my own heartbeat, which is always rhythmical, with the sounds that are around me at any given time. Uh, so you can have this relationship obviously with a drum or um, anything rhythmical, like, you know, the, a table, it's really, it's there. Or you can explore things that are less, less formed, like uh, a, a toaster popping up. Um, <laughs> actually, I have a toaster oven that has this very consistent uh, beat. It's like tick, 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 tick. <laughs> and so when that when I'm toasting in the morning, I'm just dancing. I'm like, okay, here's my here's my instrument, and like I'm responding. So it's really like 
it's really fascinating when you start to listen to your appliances communicate. Um, and when you're outside, you can listen to the birds. Obviously, you can listen to the sound of children running, um, the, the hum of traffic. Um, I, I have here a barking dog. You know, the rain when it's dripping, it's not pouring anymore. Um, there's just, there's so much out there already. And, and it's something that I, I like to, to do is like, even if I hear, even if I hear sound, um, and it's a set, it's a, I have a sense that there's rhythm there. How can I, how can I ex not extract, but for instance, take the, the whir of a washing machine. Um, and instead of just moving as the whir of the washing machine, explore what it means to be in opposition of that. Mm -hmm. And so maybe being a bit more erratic, yeah. uh, maybe mm -hmm. popping in an elbow every now and then. Um, and it is a this collaborative relationship, like the inside, outside, outside, inside. Mm -hmm. um, and it's totally improv improvisational. Um, for me, most of what I'm doing in my artistic process is really just like making it up um, because I really don't know what I'm doing. And that that feels good. This like unknowing, this feels good. And it's also related to my, the felt sense of rhythm rather than the knowing of, of what it is. Like I have a sense, okay, yes, there's a four, four beat and yes, there's 12, eight and you know, there's swing and there's a difference between them. Um, but I'm more interested in discussing or talking or feeling what it's like outside of the language portion of it, like the mathematical structure of it, um, because there's not a mathematical structure to the sound of a dog barking or children running on the sidewalk. It's just this like very organic phenomenon. Like we happen to run rhythmically, you know, and our heartbeat is rhythmical. And so it's just organic. It's just there and, and available for us to um, to to be in improvisation with. Um, what else do I have here? Uh, yeah, so. If if I'm walking around, even if I'm sitting here, these words come to me and they are into my body, rhythm into my body and out of my body. At all times, the sound or the rhythm comes into my body and it comes out through gesture. And so the relationship to movement and rhythm obviously uh, starts with a uh, an awareness that there's something I'm responding to and the response is gesture. Um, and it really does require a kind of deep listening to notice like how my body wants to respond in this moment rather than how it's supposed to respond or the um, choreographic uh, um, compositions that can easily be imparted onto dancers bodies um that's why I love improvisation because I get to respond to the moment rather than having to replicate a moment that has already come and gone um yeah um, the other aspect of rhythm and movement and storytelling for me is extremely spiritual and oh hello <laughs> um and it's been a pathway for me to communicate with my ancestor 100 percent um because they communicate to me through rhythm and drums and percussion and i communicate to them with my body through gesture and response 
So I don't need to have a language because the only language I speak is English and that's not the, the language in which my body wants to move in. So how I approach my own like decolonization of the body is to be in conversation through rhythm with my ancestors and also with the ancestors that exist at any given place that we are in, um, the animals that have come and gone, the ancient trees. And so I, I definitely, a large portion of my my work is remaining in that sphere. And I it's hard to even explain it because I'm not in it. And when I'm in it, then it's a felt sense. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, and feel free to think a little bit about how rhythm has been used in, in ways of communication for you, um, maybe even just in relationships with people in your life, um, how you've noticed it, it facilitates deeper conversations and dialogues. Mm -hmm. Am I good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, okay. Well, we'll do an exercise. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so this is very interesting because it's both live and on on Zoom, and it will also be recorded. So then people will be seeing this in the future, which is just so funny to me that these intersections are always happening. <laughs> Um, so if you, if anyone in this room wants to sit, you can remain sitting. If you want to opt out, you can, um, but standing might be a, a bit preferable. And so at home, if you can do the same thing, you can opt in, opt out. If you want to just listen and witness and put this in your pocket for later, you can, um, sitting or standing as well. So I'm going to just stand. <laughs> <clears throat> Close your eyes. Start to notice your body from the top of your head all the way to the bottom where your feet are planted on the ground. You may want to wiggle as you travel up and down. Wiggle your body. It could be slight. It can, it can be very still. Just to start to notice that, hey, I'm here, I have a body. It's the thing that moves with me. It's this constant rhythmic current. Return to the top of your head and find a pathway that you can start to relax and soften your eyes, your nose, your cheeks your chin, your mouth, finding a way for everything to just slowly soften, your shoulders, feeling them pull away from your ears, your chest, your elbows, your wrists, your fingers, your hips, your thighs, your knees, your calves, your ankles, your toes. Now begin to listen to your heartbeat. It might take you a moment to find it, it might be quiet. And if it's hard to hear it, you can Put your hand to your heart or find a place where you know you can feel your heartbeat. And just start to notice the structure of it, the tempo, the quality. And see if you can let that fill your head. Maybe you can start counting it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three,
Start to notice that that beat in your head. And when it's in there, let that dissolve into your entire body. So your whole body is moving with your heartbeat. And if it helps, you can slowly sway side to side, you can bounce up and down, or you can just feel it, whatever works. And when you have that heartbeat in your body and you can feel it and you feel grounded with it, start to listen to the room and what's happening outside of you. Don't make any decisions about which sounds you hear the most, just start to notice. And when you're ready, just choose one sound. Maybe it's a sound that sticks out to you, or maybe it's a sound that has a very inherent rhythmic quality that's easy to hear. Start to mix that with your heartbeat. Start to build and compose a score for your body. When you have that one sound, find another sound. Can you find the rhythm that's there? Is there one? Is it sparse? Does it lack rhythm? Can you play with the rhythm outside of the sound? Can you create one on your own? For the next couple of minutes, just start to move your body with this score that you just composed. You have your heartbeat, you have these two sounds in your environment. Just start to move, it can be subtle, you can just move with your hand, with your head. You can move with your toe. Maybe if you wish, you can move around the space in your room or the space where we are now. Or you can continue to just to compose. Maybe the sounds shift, they come and they go. This is uh, an exercise you can do at any point, anywhere you are, um, especially when you're waiting for something, you're feeling impatient. And instead of grabbing your phone, just start to listen to what's around you and notice how other people are moving. Sometimes we can um, learn about rhythm just by observing other people, the way they move the haste, the slowness. Composing, composing a score for your body to move with at any time. You don't even need music. <laughs> so take your time if you're really vibing with this, just keep going. Um, and I would love to hear thoughts, if you have questions.
doing this yeah yeah okay, okay. open to questions yeah thank you for that. yeah of course thank you so, Elena, participating. um i would i'd like to open the zoom room and the room room to questions um i i can start by just saying that um it there was a few moments where I was like, oh, I never thought about this. And one mm -hmm. was like, what is rhythm? Like, and how is it different from noise? Mm -hmm. Or even when you were talking about like responding to the in-between, that was something that really popped out to mm -hmm. me. Like, what does that mean for you as a performer or a mm -hmm. dancer? Um, that in-between, is it in-between noise? And rhythm is it in between silence and sound mm -hmm. um i don't know i know it's not a very concrete question but is there anything that comes up mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you could elaborate on mm -hmm. yeah I, I think it's both like there's there's mm -hmm. definitely funny because there's we have this vacuum that's um playing for us and in between it yeah. is something else and so you know, like okay how do I respond how can I respond to to the sound outside of that and when it comes like am I cons am I consistent with it do I change when it arises these are like all kind of decisions that just happen in the moment rather than like predetermined decisions um yeah the in-between can also be stillness, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, it, the in-between can offer me a chance to to completely change the rhythm I was doing before. I think that when thinking about waiting, that made, made sense of like waiting is kind of this yeah. kind of in-between. Yeah. Like one thing starting and one thing ending. Mm -hmm. And so um, being in tune with it and sitting with it that was something I think I'll be thinking about. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. thanks for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, thank you for sharing. That's... Are there any questions online? <laughs> no. Sharon raised a hand. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. Hi. So I. I can't hear you. <laughs> you can't hear me? Sorry. I couldn't hear my heart. I couldn't find my heartbeat. Oh. So I, I had to let that go. Uh, however, very there. I'm house sitting, and there's a fish tank here that has definitely um, uh, a, a rhythm mm -hmm. <laughs> of gurgling. So yeah. I just had to forget the, you know, not beat myself up about not being able to hear or feel my heart, but just go with what I could could I could feel. Mm. Mm. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And no, it's just, it is there, even if you can't. <laughs> I know it is. <laughs> Good thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think if there's moments where you feel more stressed or anxious in life, that's a good opportunity to like feel it. You're like, okay, this is the, this is the rhythmic quality of my heart in this, in this situation. And it could be something you remember, you know, when you when you can't feel it otherwise. Like it's I have felt it and it is active. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna move over here so yeah. it's easier to pull up. <laughs> I am back. <laughs> uh thank you so much for that talk. It was really lovely. I definitely appreciated how you continue to sort of embed the idea of rhythm and the multiplicity of rhythm mm -hmm. uh, throughout your engagement in the world. So I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, I kept thinking about this lecture series, not this one, but a different one I've been listening to online and it's through the Getty Institute. Okay. And it's this fabulous uh, podcast. Mm -hmm. And the last one I listened to was about uh, Ben Patterson and it focused on Ben Patterson, who if, people online are not familiar, was um, a 20th century Black American composer. And he somehow was aligned or misaligned with the Flexus movement, but he eventually disassociated with it um, for various reasons. But he um, had a beautiful interpretation uh, and composition with the world. And in particular, I'm, I was thinking about what you're saying around listening. 
to the environment. And he actually composed a piece for his son around traffic lights mm -hmm. uh, and kind of to talk or to teach his son to be safe in the world mm -hmm. and to obviously be uh, cognitive of what was happening, mm -hmm. uh, both uh, just day to day and then I guess in, in society in general. Mm -hmm. Um, so I wanted to sort of shout out Ben Patterson, <laughs> and if people aren't familiar with that lecture series, please find it. It's really lovely uh, recording artists. Um, but I was really taken with this in-between uh, moment and, and what Kosar was touching on as well. And I wonder um, how you engage the in-between with your own performances. And then I guess stepping back to Ben Patterson, if you ever think about yourself as a composer, because you're definitely, you know, you sort of, we started off as mm. you're a non-artist and you're kind of, you know, <laughs> occupying a space that engages with art, engages with rhythm, of course, and 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 history. Um, and maybe you're a composer more mm. than a dancer. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting because I hadn't really thought about it until I was like preparing for this, this um, talk. And I noticed that I was, I was, the, the the element of like being in collaboration with my environment and with the sounds is totally like what a composer does. Yeah. Um, I haven't done any, like I I have collaborated in, comp in composing um, things for performances, but I've never done like the technical aspect. It's more like a communi communication, like I want it to sound like this and want it here. And usually when I'm doing that, I'm moving at the same time. It's like, I want it to sound like this or like this or like this. Mm -hmm. And luckily my partner Owen is amazing at translating <laughs> yeah. because otherwise it would just be really weird, <laughs> like confusing. Um, You're on the same frequency. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so I, yeah, I think about it more as like a collaborative mm. process. like. But yeah, I, I, I will sit with that like thought you you shared. Um, yeah, maybe that's what I'm doing, just <laughs> in the moment. <laughs> Lee Ingram, composer. Yeah. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Not an artist. Well, composers are. There's room for everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I wonder too um, if you wanted to talk about the work you have here, like speaking of collaboration, because mm -hmm. uh, this the show that we're in, uh, Plural Presences is all about collaboration. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been like over a year. Yeah. Um, and the, I was in a different group at first and now the second group definitely moved at a different rhythm okay. for sure. Like there were more of us and um, we had a lot of our voices engaged in the, the art. Um, it's like a 20 minute long spoken word piece. So there's definitely like a rhythmic quality to that um collaborating is like for me collaborating is full of different like rhythmic currents <laughs> um it can feel easy sometimes and then it's like oh this is really hard and like um I I don't know what you're trying to communicate um through words and but I'll see what it what it is when it's finished you know what we were trying to communicate and so now when I look at it, I'm like, oh yeah, this is, we were trying to communicate and we did. And it's a mix of, of all of our different rhythms involved as well um, to create something that's entirely autonomous almost outside of us. Yeah. And collaborating at a distance too, like, right. you know, two, two of the people in the project were our Nanaimo. And so a lot of like Zoom calls and and in those calls, I couldn't, I can't sense the person, like their physical presence, which comes with all of their rhythmic currents, <laughs> couldn't be sensed. And so I think sometimes that made it really hard. So collaboration from afar is very challenging for me um, because it lacks that felt sense that happens when you're just like in the same room with somebody. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm picking up on what you're saying in terms of, recognizing the various elements in the project and i remember hearing that like you know a long time ago when a collaboration is really strong you don't actually differentiate any voices mm -hmm. you know it's, it's just one voice mm -hmm. almost even mm -hmm. no matter how many people are contributing yeah and so i think that that piece that we're showing right now um 
I know the part of it is called Nest, and I think the video might have a different think, <laughs> title or yeah, or just all together. Maybe the whole thing is Nest okay. Instant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's lots of titles, <laughs> exactly. But uh, yeah, when you see that, it, there's, I don't want to say it's anonymous because it certainly is not. There's there's definitely voices at foot there, mm -hmm. but um, but it's indistinguishable, mm -hmm. like who is contributing mm -hmm. which element. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's what I like about a lot of like um, environmental sounds or um, you know, ambient noise that sometimes you can't tell the difference between mm. they're not totally distinct they kind of meld and like flow from one to the next and some stand out but it doesn't last very long so the whole thing is just a uh, comment on the noise of an environment you know yeah. just like you know, we could create a whole soundscape just from like the sounds that we're hearing right now and like I mean, I don't know if it's the car going this way or if it's a car going this way. And so, yeah, that's a really interesting point to to bring up about like collaborative pieces that kind of become like their own thing and you can't hear the distinctions mm -hmm. or see and notice. Um, but like they're in there, but yeah, it feels like it's, it's, it's yeah it's its own, it's its own thing. <laughs> we might pan around so that everyone yeah. can see what we're talking about <laughs> at some point <laughs> yeah it, it was originally um shown i think at media net mm -hmm. earlier this year yeah like an earlier version of yeah it. and it was just the nest and then the score which didn't have any video and it didn't have um any text involved okay. and like there's just no video right so it was just um just the score and the nest. So this yeah. is a very different piece. Though, mm -hmm. really. Yeah, there's a like a seeing element, I suppose. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, yeah. It might be nice to take a, a moment to just kind of clarify too with the project we've referred to PIDC, which oh my goodness, let's hope I can get it right. It's Physical Intersections Digital Collaborations, yeah. PIDC. And this is a project initiated by our partners at Exchanges um, Studio and Galleries. Uh, and funded through the Canada Council for the Arts and the Victoria Arts Council is one of the community partners, along with uh, MediaNet Flux Gallery. So MediaNet Flux Gallery have come in heavy with the, <laughs> with the technical elements of the show, which almost all the pieces have a technical element. So we thank them, thank them for that. And then Exchanges was uh, successful in securing the commissioning funds through the Canada Council, so that these artists were able to work in the last. Month, uh, last year plus. Yeah, year plus. Yeah, I think it was almost 18 months or something. Yeah. It seems like it's going on forever. <laughs> yeah, and the Victoria Arts Council will be publishing a special issue of our um, magazine until dedicated to the PIDC project. So you can watch for that in the new year. And each, I, I think this is now the third uh, public installation or, or iteration of, of many installations. Uh, so all three will be encapsulated in the magazine at some some point or some in some way yeah i'll just do a little um check to see if How are we olivia doing? we're doing great on time um okay i can read some of the yeah, things we have in the chat <laughs> well olivia as always active <laughs> Um, they're saying in French, the element of a washing machine is called a tambour. Oh, yeah. Drum. Thank you for the pauses. Uh, this is from Kemi. Thank you for the pauses and opportunities to connect with our own rhythm. I was just wondering if you could talk about improvisation and rhythm. Mm -hmm. So, would you like to say a few words about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it depends because if I'm if I'm improvising with like if I'm by myself, for instance, I'm just like walking through my apartment and there's no music on, like I'm definitely improvising with whatever sounds I hear. And sometimes it's just like inside, like, oh, I, this song that I was listening to is inside or like I'm just moving. And so they're, you know, I'm improvising as I just warm up my body in any, in the morning, for instance. Um, if I'm, if I'm doing like, it's, <laughs> funny that Kemi asked me this question because I'm like Kemi you know <laughs> um yeah times where I've I've been uh collaborating with the musician um 
like my partner plays violin, so this is something we would often do. And my friend Habib plays saxophone, and this is also something we've done. And we are in conversation with one another. So whatever I'm doing is responding to whatever rhythmic decisions that the person is making. And I also know that whatever decisions they're making is based on my own rhythmic current. So maybe there's a symbiosis happening and um, and, a, and a sensing. And there's some some quality of anticipation, like being in the anticipation as well, not in the decision-making, but anticipating and um, being open to the surprise like of a note that I didn't know was coming and reacting to it as well. So like there's, yeah, just remaining open to wherever I might go um, and looking around the space. Like this, there's an object on the ceiling. I don't know what those are called, but it's like a grid. And if I wanted to engage exactly with what I see, I could put that in my body and start being quite rigid, you know, and each square is pretty precise. So maybe I could move in a very precise, direct, rhythmical way, or I could challenge that and be soft. So both opposing and being with. Um, yeah. Is that, <laughs> is that answered? <laughs> Thanks, Kemi. <laughs> Thank you so much. See you all soon. Bye. Thanks, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> hey.